and they were led by the only constant member, the man sitting next to me, Mr. Mick Thomas. Mick is the 2019 APRA Ambassador for the 2019 CBAA Conference. Would you please welcome Mick Thomas? So Mick, of course, has had a really fine solo career up front of the Roving Commission and The Sure Thing, which is his latest band. Even though, Mick, that you know, you've considerably moved on, you've been a, a solo artist for about 20 years, you've moved on since the days of weddings, parties, anything, do you still get approached on the street or the pub on Saturdays? It is Saturday today, and people say Happy Father's Day to you. For sure, but um, always in a... Whenever you think you've done a really great tour, you've done it for 35 days around the country and you're coming home feeling pretty good about yourself and someone will walk up to you and go, you're the guy from weddings, aren't you? What do you do these days? <laughs> so, yeah, I still get it for sure. And your fans, they were, they were all wetheads, weren't they? Yeah, they were. And uh, look, I, I shouldn't grumble because I've, a lot of them have come along for the ride, you know, and even taken it, but I've spent more time out of the weddings, and the weddings went for 15 years, and it's been 20 years since we finished up. So, um, most of them, or a good, a good amount of them, have come along for the ride and are still buying what I sort of put out now. And, you know, it's a bit of a, a bit of a deal we've made, I think. Rather than being good at what you do. So, will you play us a song? I guarantee everyone will listen to the end. Yeah, good. good. <laughs> right. I play this current, it's a current song, my um, I still am. Despite all my talk of being an independent artist, still am signed to uh, Mushroom Music and Bloodlines, and uh, I've never been any bit grateful for those people for sticking with me. So uh, I'm sure they would uh, want to keep my ass if I didn't play the current single, which they dropped last week. <laughs> <laughs> Film clip and all. It's the first, the the first thing, I've, first time I've ever said that I've had a release that doesn't appear in a physical form. So there you go. Anything you recognise. Frozen in my mind, you came walking down deserted High Street on a blistering summer's day. 1996 a year, a Sunday evening. I walked out of the video shop and you waved in mock embarrassment as if polishing a low window as you walked on by. But you didn't walk on by. You stayed. I stayed. We stayed. Do you see anything you recognize? Shops. Look, it has, and um, there was a time when, like, we wedding signed to Warner's in whatever, 1984, 85, and I still recall going down to say the Warner's offices when we had an album out in, in the late 80s, and having to argue really strongly that, uh, that, and there was like five people in the band, and I think nearly everyone in that band had to do promo duties. And we were arguing really strongly that we would put a, a limit on 25 interviews a day per person. That was how much there was in the way of promo opportunities in the late 80s. So there was magazines, there was all that stuff. And I don't think major record companies like Warner's even rated community radio in those days. So. I've just got a gentleman there totally agreeing with me. And uh, so they wouldn't even service community radio. And they, they, they sort of, and I guess that was one of the problems of the, uh, of the physical product, of being too expensive to actually be servicing community radio when you were talking vinyl, sending out vinyl copies. So as that's contracted, what you're finding is that um, a radio, uh, like a record company like Bloodlines, which is part of the Mushroom Records, you know, one of their imprints, who, that's a label far more for the older artists, I mean, because initially we were all on Liber, like, whether it be Mushroom or White Label, which became Liberation, and then what they did was they split Liberation in half and they put a, a bunch of us like myself and Archie Roach and they brought it over onto Bloodlines, and I got told pretty quickly I wasn't allowed to call it the APR label, but, um, <laughs> yeah. 
it was a label for the older artists. And there's a, a fair recognition now that they, they are going to serve as community radio and they do see it as being really important. And so as someone who, who does travel around a lot, I'll, I'll, I mean, it's not a criticism, but it's... It's 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 um, state by state or area by area. Some areas have a real engagement with the local venue, and some don't. You know, so sometimes you, you play somewhere and you go, well, I don't know. You know, I don't even know what the station is. And sometimes you go there and you do know what the station is. And I, I would say to you here, is this a room full of people who are probably a lot of you are from uh, the, you know, outside the capital cities and I think it's going to be tied up with a local venue you know um, with a, a local organization because otherwise it's quite ad hoc you know whether someone gets in touch with you or doesn't but when you go to those places what I was getting at is, is your opportunity for, for to promote is, is so much more limited than it used to be you know, like every even um, provincial newspapers used to have a music section I mean I have for also wanting to play one of his old hits, Father's Day. Thanks so much, Vin. The one thing worse than having a song you have to play every year for the rest of your life, and it's not having a song you have to play every year. Thanks a lot. I'm a single. 